Good morning, everybody, or good evening, everybody, depending on where you're uh, watching from. Uh, my name is Mark Jokic, and you are watching Where in the World is Your Music Studio on the Arts and Farts channel. And remember, that's farts with three Fs, so you have to say it loud so everybody can hear. Um, it is uh, 9.30 a.m. here in uh, Montreal. Um, had a bit of a bit of a late night, so I'm going to give my honest introduction, which is, ah, that's good. Nice stretch. I don't think anyone really does that on, on live TV. Got my coffee here. Usually 9.30 is not too early for me, but uh, considering I'm a, a new dad and had a few little uh, pit stop wake up calls last night, uh, I'm feeling like I'm a teenager again, waking up at 9.30. Enough about me. This is not about me. This is about a good friend of mine and a wonderful colleague uh, of mine from the Cleveland Institute of Music. Uh, we date back from uh, two. Uh, what is it? Nineteen? No, two thousand to two thousand two. That's right. That made it sound like we dated and <laughs> didn't date in two thousand, but we date back from two thousand and two. That still sounds bad. I picked the wrong words for that. Anyways. We played music together back in 2000 to 2002. And uh, Jennifer Heemstra is her name. She's a wonderful collaborative pianist and uh, at Cleveland Institute of Music and also a performing uh, performance major there. You can tell it's morning. I'm just choking all over my words. All right, come on, Mark, get it together. Uh, she now lives in Dushanbe, Tajikistan. She's lived all over the world. So we're actually really having a, a cross, another cross uh, global um, interview here, which I think is really, really awesome. It really fits into the uh, where in the world is your music studio uh, topic here. A little brief uh, intro about her. Uh, she's done so much since uh, we graduated in, uh, from Cleveland Institute of Music. Uh, she's the founder of uh, Kolkata Classics. Um, she'll talk about that a little bit more in the interview. And she is also a winner of the Secretary of State Award for Outstanding Volunteerism Abroad and also founder of the Pitch Pipe Foundation. She's done a lot uh, in her career. She's probably one of the most fascinating uh, people I know, which I think is really, really awesome. And uh, I really look forward to getting caught up with her after all these years um, uh, since Cleveland Institute of Music. So I'm going to bring on Jennifer Heemstra here. And uh, we'll we'll start the interview. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. She has a lot of really neat things to show, um, and a lot of neat things to talk about. Uh, I know we had a little dress rehearsal yesterday, and uh, um, we had just a wonderful conversation. I wish we could have aired that live stream. It was really a lot of fun. But here we go. I'm going to unmute your mic. Hello. Good afternoon there. Good morning. Yeah. Good evening here. <laughs> check check. Yeah. One two three. Sorry for that awkward introduction there. Oh, it was fabulous. I loved it. <laughs> I know. You you needed a little bit more caffeine, I think. Maybe a few more yeah, shots. Of yeah, yeah. That, Maybe at the end, usually, you'll prove that. Yeah, that's usually <laughs> me in the morning. I try not to call anybody or talk to anybody. It's like usually until noon, uh, I will not go on, especially live stream or go on the phone. It's like, don't talk to me. So you're doing I well? Understand. Well, thanks for making the exception for me. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm great. I'm outside. I'm in our beautiful garden. We've got two yucca plants out here. We've got roses, although they're not really blooming that much because I just kind of trimmed them. Yeah, but we have this English style garden with our beautiful uh, car in the background, the blue Lada from Soviet era uh, that we actually do drive around here. And why don't you so, remind everybody where you're, uh, where you're talking from, just in case they missed the sure. intro. Sure, we are in, and you, you had a wonderful pronounce, pronunciation, Dushanbe, Tajikistan, which is in Central Asia. So we are north of Afghanistan, we border Pakistan, China, Uzbekistan, in that region. So mm. um, very unique. I Frankly, if I'm quite honest with you, I had never heard of it before we moved here. So <laughs> That's awesome. So, so very where in the world is your music studio? I'm, I'm positively thrilled. Uh, so uh, where are you taking us now? It's actually right in there. So this is the view that I have from my windows of this mm. lovely um, 
actually, it's a fruit garden. We have peach trees and pear trees. And we just um, brought in a, of several, as I fall down the steps here, <laughs> bushels and fruit. So now I'm entering my house. That's where we're going. But nice. we're going to take a slight detour because here we are. You still there? Yes, I am. That's right. Um, I already have. I've been greeted by my kitties. Uh, they're at my feet. Here's one of them. And right. we're going to go to not door number one, but we're going to start with door number two. Okay. Here we go. What's behind? Ooh. So. Could it be? I, oh, 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 the surprise, the surprise, the suspense. Oh, and purple ceiling and wow. green cloth. So this oh is my, my God. lovely green room, also purple. Um, as I mentioned, I was looking outside and, and that is the beautiful garden view of my real performance studio. Mm -hmm. This is more of my electronic studio, which unfortunately I look at a wall. So there's a window <laughs> where the blue curtain is, but it looks at a cement wall of the building next door. And I thought, what can we do? So we decided to turn this into a recording studio. So wow. I have my lovely keyboard here, which uh, I'm sure we'll talk about later. And I'll say, I can't believe I've ever thought about playing an electronic instrument, mm -hmm. but there it is. Um, I've got some wonderful lights that I acquired from India. Those look like industry standard. They are. And these, I mean, this you can really buy uh, at no other place. This lovely, lovely uh, cardboard slash um, old curtain upcycled. Um, is that real here. cardboard? Oh, absolutely. Wow. Yes, this is cardboard. And oh, shoot. <laughs> this is real cardboard, real, real shears. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, during quarantine life, we got a little bored yeah. and we needed something to do. So we came up with how to make these light boxes. And we have another one over here, um, which again, homemade. We could probably, we could do a special deal at the end. Maybe we could put a link on the bottom available for $29.99. I'm thinking maybe we can talk about the price. Three equal payments, I think would be a little bit, yeah. bit more okay. humane. Yeah. Okay. We, we can talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then this lovely screen here is held together at the bottom with your own shower curtain. Shower curtain <laughs> rod at the bottom and a shower curtain rod at the top. So- <laughs> Do it um, yourself, all right. I can sit here and, and really go anywhere with you because in the end, in post-production, we can put images, we can put a C, we can make me you know, blow a machine and I can be at the top of a mountain uh, performing, you know, rock on and off. Um, so, <laughs> you know, when you showed this to me yesterday, I thought it was like, again, when I was talking about the industry standard lights, I thought that was like a real green screen. And I thought they weren't all the same or something, you know? Oh, no, but they, yeah, yeah these, these are, these are proper oh. lights. Um, oh, no, but the, gr the, the green screen, I didn't know it was a DIY project. I thought you had someone like yeah. set it up for you in so there. You too can buy this. It's really deceiving because that's actually what people do. You buy the green cloth and then yeah. you just get a hammer and you... You know, put it on a wooden box. You put it on a stage, mm -hmm. and or you just get a, a metal frame, um, just like a clothing rod. You know, like the mm. movable portable kind, and you just put it up anywhere you want to go. It's just That's in post production. Amazing. You know, yeah. you can snazz it up. But I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm getting really bored of this background, and I think the viewers are too because uh, okay. you see so this every interview. Uh, 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 here's the rest of this. We have a lovely couch. I've got some. Wonderful, uh, you know, posters that aren't really up yet. I've got yeah. a lovely art from India, from Nepal. I've got some mandalas. I've okay. got my um, electronic system here, a mixing board and all that mm. lovely stuff. So we can exit here. That's um, great. So a lot last, of this stuff has, has come with you through your travels. Asia, Central Asia, fabulous. This is right yeah. here, the ceiling. Very, have to say bye know. to the purple ceiling. Bye, purple ceiling. I've never yeah, seen well, a purple it's ceiling. In before. our bedroom too. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> That's so cool. Okay. I kind of want that. And now we have we've got the cats. We've got Sparky. We've got there's one. We've got another one up there. We've got Q, and we've got Squeaker. She's kind of blending in with the background right here. So basically, now, you can't go up the stairs or into that room unless you give them a kitty treat, right? That's how it works. Basically. Yeah. 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 And, here. yeah. And yeah, we're, we'll get, we're pretty gullible. We're, we're suckers. <laughs> um, so I have this room here. 
Now, I do have, you know, you can see lovely music shelf. And I'll give you just a quick wide angle. And I'm going to set my phone down here. Okay. And you can turn this one off. And you can turn that one on over there. So okay. a full, complete view of my piano room. Mm -hmm. Except that middle stuff isn't normally there. That's just especially for you today. Oh, you didn't have to do that. But I, I got to say, the, your your camera setup is awesome. I got to tell the viewers about this a little bit later. How uh, uh, just how I, th I think you get the award for uh, the most technologically advanced interviewee that we've had. So <laughs> you, you tell it's, the interviewer how it's thank done. You. So. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's uh, <laughs> it's just you know putting on concerts abroad. You got to really um, be prepared, and you you learn about production, you learn about marketing, yeah. and uh, snowballs. So. Yeah. I'm going to put this down and then you can put this other camera on, right? I will put on the other camera angle. Yes. Okay. So here you go. Bye. 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 Oh my God. I love doing that. I just clicked twice on the mouse, but I feel like I'm like, like I set up the cameras almost like I'm taking credit for it. That's so cool. All right. So that's a nice view of the piano there. All right, there you are. I got to tell our guests that uh, yesterday when we were doing our little sound check, um, uh, that uh, oh wait, I, one thing I forgot was to put it in horizon view. That's another thing we figured out together yesterday. Yeah, but Jennifer and her husband, they really helped um, uh, kind of open up my, my eyes to all this like different kind of uh, camera angle work. It was really, really awesome. Like, cause usually we just do it with like two set cameras, but uh, they totally upped me on it. They're like, well, why don't we set up two cameras? This way we can walk around the house and then we can have a set camera by the piano. I was like, okay. Oh, I think you're actually, I think this camera is now muted. Cause we can't hear you. Let's do a little sound check. Check, check, check. Uh, not Quite. Uh, let's see. I'm going to mute your mic, then unmute it. See what happens. Oh, we're having a little bit of technical difficulty. Can anybody lip read? <laughs> Take your time. We will figure it out. Anyways, uh, until she gets the uh, uh, sound up and running again. Wait a few more seconds. It's almost there. Hmm. Let's see if I can figure out anything from my end. Okay, I will add. Let's see here. Try adding you to the stream again. Still no sound. We'll get this sorted out soon. <laughs> When in doubt, bring the cat on camera. <laughs> Everyone loves a cat. Kitty. <laughs> anyway, so um, one, uh, what was the last interview we did on uh, where in the world is your music studio? I'm just trying to remember where that, where that was. I think we were in Hello, England. hello, hello. Oh. oh. Hello? There you are. We got sound, we got sound. <laughs> It's on the TV or the, okay. All right, cool. Then I just, we've, we've got our, the mic on the camera. Oh yeah, fantastic. Cool, oh, here yeah. we are. I can still tell it's morning because I was like, what could I possibly talk about? You're like, Ooh. Not coming up with anything. So <laughs> knock, knock. <laughs> here we are, yay. Well, thank you so much now that I'm sitting down. Uh, That's all right. <laughs> that That's actually all right. a lot to do, you know, walk and talk and hold the, the, the phone. It's, it can be very yeah. complicated. You know, I should I should keep our cat actually on on standby. I think that's a great thing to have when there's technical difficulty. Be like, quickly get the cat. Yes, Ugh. exactly. Exactly. That's why it's we like have everyone. To everyone loves cats, so it's all good. Fantastic. That was cute. So she's actually a cat from Tajikistan. That one. Oh, the really? rescue. Okay. Did he come to you, or did you go find the cat? I we you know it was it, we just both turned and our eyes you know it's like love at first sight. Um, and That's then right. I thought I can't I can't just let you stay here. So I brought her yeah. back. 
<laughs> yeah, added her to the two others, so we have three total. No. Yeah. All, three. All right. All so three. now, now for my favorite part of the show, and yes. that is kind of my virtual snooping around of people's music studios and going through their stuff, but it's in the form of questions, um, yes. which I love. Uh, so you're in your music studio now. It looks fantastic. You got your piano there. And uh, so really look like a pianist now. The only thing left to do is lean on it like that. You know, that whole there we life. Go. <laughs> so in your own words, like how would you describe when in your view, what is a classical musician's studio or any instrumentalist studio? How would you describe it sure. to someone who might not know? Um, well, it's definitely a safe haven or a safe place. And mm. it's definitely a reflection of oneself. So I look around and I have tons of sheet music and books as most people do. Mm. And instantly I can be um, transport myself to where I was in third grade. Oh, I played that piece and I remember what I wore and I was so nervous. And then, oh, I look, played this in high school or I played this in college. Oh, I played this in Nepal or whatever. It's almost like, um, you know, your own little journal just because of the sheet music that you have and the associations. But um, yeah, I just think it's a safe haven, a safe place. It's a, you know, place you can come in, get your pajamas on, get a glass of wine or coffee and, um, you know, Mm -hmm. work on your craft. That's a great way to, to describe it. And if you're in your pajamas and you have a glass of wine, you have the windows in back of there for everyone to see you. Yep. There. So, so good point, because there were actually curtains there and they had heavy <laughs> curtains and shears, but you saw how we upgraded those to the light boxes in the other room. Yes, so we yes. have nothing here, but luckily I did scope out the area and make sure there's no one that actually is looking in. Yeah. Because yeah, that yeah. It was on my thought. And then I thought, you know what? Screw it. If they want to watch, fine. You know, they have nothing better to do. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, um, okay. So you're, you're talking to us from Tajikistan and you lived in quite a few places around the world. Um, mm -hmm. Do you move like all the contents of your studio, wherever you go, like piano included? Um, no, <laughs> initially, no. Yeah. Um, in, in 2010 or 2010, that's when I left Cleveland and I moved to Rome, Italy. And I showed up literally with two suitcases and oh, wow. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. Everyone accused me of doing the eat, pray, love journey um, on mm. that, you know, that movie and book. Yeah. And um, I actually wanted to take a sabbatical from playing piano. So yeah. I didn't play for about a year and a half. Okay. And, I just learned Italian. It's applicable to our, you know, career because I work with singers, opera, opera, right? Mm -hmm. And then I finally realized, no, I think I, I really miss music. So I rented a piano from a local mom and pop music store in Rome. And then once I realized, okay, I'm definitely, you know, this abroad international life is for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be living abroad. I brought all my stuff with me. But um, so okay. this actually, I gave to Massimo and Fabi, friends of mine who are actually from Italy. And, um, and then my sheet music, I gave to another friend, you know, and put it in storage. And then I finally got it all back. So, and now oh. it does go with me. This met me in India. I was so, imagining like a storage unit in Cleveland that has the, the, the other half of the interview in it. So, uh, but there's, there seems to be some interesting things in your studio now, and we'll, we'll definitely get to that. Uh, sure. which is really exciting. Um, uh, any neat artifacts or collectibles uh, you've had with you for a long time? A lot of stuff that's kind of, uh, you know, survived the move from, from studio right. to studio. Right, okay. So I took careful notes on this. So I have two items because I know Mark has to maintain some time here. So- You got a schedule um, to keep, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have two items that I'd love to talk about. One um, is, of course, um, is a pitch pipe. And if you're not aware what a pitch pipe is, it's a harmonica that you can get the starting pitch from if you sing in a cappella choir or in a barbershop quartet. And um, this was used by my grandpa. He, uh, well, and I should just say, um, the name of my nonprofit in Michigan is Pitch Pipe Foundation. And because he sang in a barbershop quartet, for over 80 years of his life, 
when I saw him when he was 101, 100, 101, and 102, he sang gospel medleys on his birthday, and oh. then he passed shortly after. So it's it's really a huge honor and um, kind of homage to him that I named it Pitch Pipe Foundation, and I have the real pitch pipe. And then that's incredible. <laughs> and then the second thing is um, this card is very sentimental. Um, mm. So it's made by some students at St. Teresa's in Kolkata, India. And I have a long relationship with St. Teresa's and they have volunteered at many health fairs, which we can talk about later. Um, but let's see, a couple years ago, it was season four of Kolkata Classics. And I brought Catherine Brown and her daughter with me to have a meeting with Sister Margaret. And we were very excited, but we had no idea that Sister Margaret brought 300 of the students together in the performance hall for us to perform for. And we were the featured artists. And so at this concert, the students presented this homemade concert, this homemade card to me. And I just thought it was very sweet, um, complete with you know, the music on the rack and the details. And it just says, music is a language that doesn't speak in words, but it speaks in emotions with love, St. Teresa's Secondary School. And I still keep in touch with these young ladies today. Some of them are, have started law school, so they are very, very sweet. Um, and this is a very precious card to me. That's amazing. You know, those mementos that uh, you receive as a musician, or especially in, in, in uh, what you do, you're a musician and entrepreneur, and you do tons of uh, volunteer and uh, you know, humanitarian work, uh, which I think is amazing. That, that type of uh, feedback you get from people, I mean, that, uh, that must make those uh, little mementos so valuable. And yeah, you can never part with them. I can imagine you can never ever part with that stuff. It means yeah. so much. Yeah. yeah thanks I, this thanks for sharing that. And I, I, I sure. love hearing about the, the pitch pipe foundation. I think that was really neat that you kept your grandfather's pitch pipe uh, and something like that so small, it would be easy to lose, but you really held on to it, you know, which I think is amazing. I'm glad you still have that. Um, on the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, what haven't you used in years in your studio? What belongs oh. back in that Cleveland storage room? So I am so worried, Mark, that you might not even know what this is. Um, the era of floppy disks. Oh, I have yeah. Them and I have to laugh because it even says CIM jazz class on this. And I thought, <laughs> oh my gosh, what? CIM at a jazz class? What? Um, <laughs> you know, resume, I have a landline written. A landline, the old school, like rotary, hello? Wow. Um, so I have these floppy disks, and I, I dare say this is actually a value um, because it's so retro. My mini iPod. Um, For music only. That's, I think nano. that's a neat thing. Before the Nano, right? Mini yeah. iPod. They, they don't make them like this anymore. They um, really, does I, it work? It works. <laughs> cool. I, I, let's hope. I'll have to, I'll, I'll do that later. Assuming I even have a charger like this anymore. This is like. Might, we yeah. might have to figure other ways to charge out. Yeah, I'll get yeah. back to you. On that. I've been thinking about <laughs> putting a, a lot of my uh, important, like uh, personal security information on those floppy disks because probably not a lot of people would be able to access the stuff on it. They're like, damn, we don't have a floppy disk drive. Hard to crack. That's right. Yeah, that might be a good idea. Yeah, go old school. Make a comeback. You know, <laughs> record, vinyl, they're coming back. Why not? Yeah, you heard it here first. Let's get back to the floppy disk, everybody. I think that's a great <laughs> idea. Um, what would you say what you can either oh. choose to answer this question or not? What's one of the strangest things that's, uh, ever happened in your studio or sure. did you find like so, an old piece of pizza in the couch or something? It, it could be anything really. Um, I, I wish I had something so exciting as, as a moldy pizza. I'm so sorry. My cats would have definitely taken, gotten that away. It's true. The cats me. would get it. So you would never know yeah. in the first place. <laughs> um, I would have to say, um, you know, either just games, a game of charades, simply because I'm here and I'm trying to rehearse with a piano quartet and we don't speak any of the same languages. Um, yeah. I don't speak Tajik, the local language, or Russian. They do not speak English. And mm -hmm. we have no history. It's not like we knew each other. We don't have a translator. And often our Wi-Fi just disappears. So we can't mm -hmm. rush to the Google Translator or anything. And yeah. 
yeah, it's a lot of dancing and, you know, games of charades and trying to suggest, no, play here, yes. And all I know is da and niet and harasho. And that's, mm -hmm. that's about it. And so, that can get uh, you through a rehearsal. Yeah. Um, well, a lot of, you know, gestures, big gestures. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we did have one wild karaoke party here. So yeah. all of the lovely lights and the system and the setup that you were kind of uh, praising, I guess, from, from the other room, we turned, we took down the pictures from this wall and we um, projected the lyrics to songs. And then we got in all of our colored lights and strobe lights and all this stuff, fog machine. And we had a big mm. karaoke party here. So that was fun. But, oh, um, cool. you know, no, sorry, the, the moldy pizza, you're gonna, you're gonna have to keep going to find some. That's good enough for arts and for arts. I'm very happy with that. Well, it's interesting you're saying about the the rehearsal. Uh, you know, as the I mean, I, I, in the card from from the kids, you know, they said that music is a language. I guess that doesn't need words. So, uh, with the rehearsal, you you really lived up to that. So you're able Absolutely. to make music together without words. I I think our neighbors were probably just dying of. You know, anyone who could hear, because we had the windows open, what was going on in our piano, you know, in this rehearsal and singing the lines and singing phrases, you know, it was very comical, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. Ed. Thanks for uh, answering all these questions about your music studio. It seems like oh, uh, it. I forgot. It, it, oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, um, this you asked me, what do I use? Or have we not come to that question yet? Oh, actually, you know, I, I meant to ask you this because we, we kind of started talking about all sorts of different things. And it was a real show and tell yesterday. You have uh, a few um, uh, oh. instrument collectibles. You're, oh, a, yeah. actually, you're, you're a multi-instrumentalist, you could say. We, we had one multi-instrumentalist on the show before, but uh, uh, along with being a fascinating person, a music and entrepreneur, you're also a multi-instrumentalist and you got well. the goods <laughs> to prove it. I, I have them, yes. I have acquired multiple instruments, but <laughs> mm, yeah, don't talk to my tablet teacher. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have um, wonderful kind of instruments from travel. This one, the happy drum, I got actually here, and I I think Very it's cool. really cool. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, I have my two tablas. Um, I have a friend, Bikram who's uh, kind of famous in Calcutta and in, in India, who's a tablet player. He's been on Grammy Award winning albums. And mm -hmm. before I left, I said, I have to have two tablas. Um, you know, take me tabla shopping. And traditionally, tablas aren't always, it's more of a male instrument too. So mm -hmm. I'm sure he was looking at me like, what are you? Oh. you know, but anyway, we went to a store, like this, a third the size of this room. It was hot, sweaty, sat on the floor barefoot, and we banged on drums for a couple hours. And lo and behold, we found you know four tablas, and I sent them home. And, and it's great, and they've made it here uh, with me. And uh, but <clears throat> and then of course, no home is complete without a melodica, um, as seen on I believe Stephen Colbert's uh, a Daily Show. If you ever see the yeah, guy. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Um, <laughs> Some people are virtuosos on that thing. I know. And then only a few keys. Might keep my uh, lovely instrument here. Um, I it's just it's not it's not working out for me. I really need to devote the hours of practice. I'm a bad adult student, if you know what that means. Um, oh, it's all so, right. So that, that's generally yeah. an accordion, right? Because sometimes you see yeah. an instrument like that, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's is, an accordion. It's like, no, it's a band. I just didn't open it up because I didn't want. To, <laughs> whoo, I didn't want that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you should play there a note on that when I when I when I screw up my questions or something like that. It's like the yeah. the Price is Right the little brass yeah. solo. <laughs> so, for the for the but, next yeah. one, I think that'd be great. Now, I mean, one thing. Oh, I was like, mm -hmm. go for it. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> um, one thing that's really been kind of uh, keeping me up at night um, is because uh, we, we played together at, at the Cleveland Institute of Music. We, uh, uh, we played, I think it was a, for like a studio class or something like that. I know we played one yeah. piece together. That's how we met. And uh, I cannot Sorry. remember what, what it is. I, I, I tried a few guesses and uh, I, I cannot remember. So do you remember what, what, what we played together in Cleveland? I do. I absolutely do. I and it took me a while too, because I was like, huh? 
which teacher? Because I did see that you had, um, who was it, Mr. Uh, you David sent me Russell. the link. Yes. And I thought, mm, I've played for his students, but you and I did not work together with him. We mm -hmm. actually were paired up for uh, the Chanson. Oh, the poem. Uh, okay. Right? And oh. we went um, to your, you had, I swear it was with Mr. Weilerstein. Oh, it could have been, yeah, it could have been with uh, with Mr. Wallerstein, yeah. And I, I just remember going to lesson and then having to play in his kind of studio class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I know it took me a while. I actually had to, to search and I was like, what did we play? Because it wasn't, you know, just a violin concerto, you know, standard concerto number one, two. And it wasn't a yeah. stuff. But yeah. yeah, I remember it, it was great and it was fun. And, you know, and then well, we thanks said, for reminding <laughs> me of that. The Chasson Poem. That is a. Uh, a, a great piece of music. Actually, it's one of the uh, pieces I, I've meant to to relearn to get back to because I think that was probably the last time that I played it uh, was with you. So that's pretty cool. Me too. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Well, maybe we should uh, record it uh, <laughs> virtually. Absolutely. Uh, just uh, have a, a reunion concert. That would be awesome. Great. That would. <laughs> mm. Awesome. Um, yeah. Actually, I'd, I'd, I'd a few uh, more questions for you because I I think like. Everything you do is is seems so awesome, and uh, we we really need to kind of hear it from you uh, today. Um, if asked today, I mean, how or why or how it would uh, do you think music is important to? It's a very general question to society or to where you are or or the uh, the world. You know, people always say music will save the world and so many positive things about it. And what would your answer be? today and as ver kind of versus to, to 20 years ago, what, what, what would you say? Oh, oh yeah, so night and day, first of all. Um, uh, well, clearly, you know, music inspires, it helps us cope. It takes mm -hmm. us out of our the mundane life, our routines, et cetera. Um, but I would say it provides common ground when it appear, might appear that there is nothing in common, for mm -hmm. instance. Um, my colleague Carrie Pierce and I performed at five of the Veterans Affairs facilities in Michigan. And at first glance, it did not look like we had anything in common with the gentlemen we were performing for, right? They were uh, military, they're you know, probably at one point in combat, um, used to a very structured life. And, and we're coming from music and the arts and concert stage and classroom. And so, um, you know, you think, what would they have in common to talk about? Well, lo and behold, we had Rachmaninoff to talk about. Um, we put on a concert in, in uh, Iron Mountain, Michigan, and these gentlemen came up to us in their Harley Davidson, you know, leather jackets, skull caps, looking very brusque. And they're just like, do you know, we really missed the, you know, the Russian composers. Do you know any Russian composers? Wow. And we're like, what? <laughs> Yeah, we know Rachmaninoff, you know, and and we have Shostakovich. And so they ended up sitting for another, they were like, do you have time? We played another 20 minutes to five gentlemen, and they ended up staying and tell us basically their life story. And and we actually got kicked out of the facility because we were they're like, please, we need this room. Please, can you, you know, go somewhere else? Mm -hmm. So um, it's just it's so incredible that, you know, it wasn't without music. We would not have known this 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 thing, we wouldn't have this common experience or Yeah, something and that's, that's a great thing when you, you meet somebody and you, you realize you have a, a common love of a composer or, or a type of music. There's something really special that happens when you, when you bond with a person like that. I actually had a next door neighbor in one of my apartments in, in Montreal uh, back when I lived downtown and uh, we had the same taste in, uh, in like alternative and rock music and you know, we could blast our, our tunes and we'd never complain about noise because it was just this common thing that we liked. And we, we keep in touch till this day, just because we kind of bonded over our similarities and our taste of music. So that's a really good point you made actually. Yeah. And that's, and, and, and also you could have be completely, you know, ideologically opposed to one one another and you might not know it, but mm -hmm. you're able to come to a safe space because of this commonality or because the yeah. love of music. So yeah. I think that's, that's great. And 20 years ago, no. <laughs> yeah. um, I was, you know, 
thinking in school 20 years ago, I was just thinking, how do I be the best pianist? How do I practice? How do I make the best sound, tone, balance, you know, voicing? Uh, what What's next in the repertoire list? You know, um, I we was both like the Chasa poem 20 years ago. What? We both like the Chasa poem 20 years ago. It's See, it's just full circle, full yeah. circle. And we kept in touch. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We have actually, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I definitely, I think my frame of mind was just one different. And now I'm also much more focused on impact. The, yeah. the impact my performance has on an audience, the impact the performance has on my colleagues on stage. And also, you know, what kind of message we're possibly weaving into our performance as well. Um, yeah, yeah. If we, if we decide to do so. Yeah, I think you're the perfect example of how how music has evolved in, in a person because, you know, I remember you as Jenny Heemstra, you know, pianist, uh, extraordinaire. And, you know, when I, um, you know, I'm when sorry, we got what? back in. I'm, I'm so, there, was a bad, there was a bad connection. Oh, yeah. No, just, <laughs> 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 it's in the morning for me to get jokes. <laughs> but it's amazing, like, you know, so many years afterward, I re read your bio, all the things you've you've done uh, all the things with, with your work and music and really bringing it to people. It's amazing how it, it's really evolved and really your purpose in music. It's really intriguing to see that in, in people that you knew so long ago and then seeing what they're do, doing present day, that really kind of defines the importance uh, of music. And I think even without asking you that question, if, you, if I just told somebody about you and then they read their bio, they would get it instantly. So I encourage a lot of, uh, uh, you viewers and listeners to go check out um, uh, Jennifer Heemstra's website and just read all about her because I think it really kind of defines the importance of music. You're just like a perfect living example oh, of that. Um, so moving on to, <laughs> you're really? welcome. No, no, that's I, I totally mean it. So yeah, check out her website. So I, I think, think it's amazing. And you have some wonderful videos up there too. Some wonderful video clips of a lot of your work. You've really brought it up, made it available for everyone to see. Um, and this is kind of uh, touching on a lot of your, your work you're, you're doing that I was talking about. I'd like you to talk just a little bit more about your um, humanitarian and entrepreneurial uh, work um, and your career as a, as a performing artist. Uh, how, how has this uh, uh, come together? What is your, in a few words, what is your experience with this? So I would say the best example that would be is um, the health fairs that we put on in Kolkata, India. Mm -hmm. So we provided free medical and social services at select concerts in a theater strategically picked in the slums in a very poor area and near a red light district. Mm -hmm. And we partnered with um, hospitals, doctors, other NGOs. We had the students at St. Teresa's um, at, as our volunteers and interns. And, and then we brought in outstanding, you know, classical performers, like people from the Cleveland Orchestra, people from Broadway, et cetera. And we incorporated uh, Grammy winning um, Indian classical artists and Bollywood singers. Wow. And so we brought about 600 to 800 women and children from underserved areas. We bust them in and gave them an awesome concert, you know, for yeah. free. And then they also got to see doctors, et cetera. And, and then um, usually we also got them up on stage. So mm -hmm. not only were they seeing the stars, but they actually became a star on stage, which really brings me the most joy when you yeah. see people light up under, under the lights and, and you know feel like they're a celebrity. And that's yeah. a wonderful experience and to give someone who feels um, like they don't exist. Yeah. And, so all on the then, same event, you performed, you made music, <laughs> And you bust in people and organized all that and had all all this stuff done with uh, medical attention and and uh, and work like that and brought people on stage. Wow, it's a lot to think yeah. about for a lot for of logistics. Uh, I had to learn to love Excel spreadsheets. Um, a lot of learning how to manage a team. What man? What is management? What does that mean? How do you you know um, kind of task people to do things? Um, how do you inspire people to be leaders? And really, how do you get sponsors on board? How, you know, all of these things um, really associated with entrepreneurial entrepreneurship. Yeah. I, I had to really learn on the fly. It's either sink or swim. 
Um, but I was just going to ask if you if you learned all this stuff in school, if there was like courses about this and, you know. So, <laughs> I know. I imagine there probably are uh, now just because times have changed, right? And yeah. Because of social media, everyone can be their own um, arts promoter, manager, etc., produce their own videos. Mm -hmm. um, but um, at Michigan State, where I did my undergrad, um, I did have a, a couple courses that you know really exposed me and talk about the importance of a headshot, of a resume, and how to kind of promote yourself as as a manager. Kind of like and a career skills course. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, but no, no course, nowhere did I ever learn any of this, um, really the, the real practical skills that I mm. developed, um, were really just, you know, watching and doing and, and, and reaching out to my colleagues who were not musicians and asking like CEOs, Hey, do you have any advice? Or, um, you know, I also took online, um, kind of programs on how to really, how to do business and, yeah, and yeah. think business minded. Because yeah. I definitely had no idea what that meant. I had yeah. thought I did at the time, but no. And the more you do, the more you realize, oh my gosh, ugh. And you think, oh, I did that. Oh my gosh. And oh wow, never do that again. I can't believe I did this. Moving forward, so mm -hmm. you also have to be able to, you know, look like a fool in this process too, and put yourself out there, be vulnerable, um, and know that um, half of it. I mean, I'd say eighty-five percent of doing something like this is just actually starting. And exactly. Yeah. And you I, learn as you go. So, um, you know, that phrase where there's a will, there's a way is absolutely true. Yeah. I, actually, I, th I think my my teachers, like my instrumental teachers, violin teachers in school are really the ones that that told me um, you'll know what to do when you find it. You know, it's like, uh, yeah. uh, you know, they teach you your instrument, but they really believe in their their students will. Uh, and actually, I, I've, I've gotten a lot of advice from from my, my teachers saying that, you know, um, uh, you know, with a good foundation and, you know, where I'm here to teach you your instrument, but uh, I, I trust and I know that you'll, you'll find what you're going to do in life in your music career, because every career is, is so different. And I think you've, you've really uh, showed, uh, you know, maybe students now uh, how you can have a, an amazing career in music and have it be really, really fulfilling. And that kind of brings me to my next question. And my last sure. question is just sort of for, for this category. Um, you know, I, 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 you might've seen from the other arts and farts videos, I've interviewed a lot of musicians, um, that are, you know, really living proof that, uh, music will, you know, make the world better. And, uh, of course, um, you are this musician, a uh, perfect example. Uh, what, what is kind of a small first step that, um, a like-minded musician like yourself could take to become just like, or maybe the next Jennifer Heenstra? Ah, um, well, first of all, you still can call me Jenny. Like, we go that far back, right? I okay, told, okay. Like, you switched to Jennifer, Jennifer, and I was like, oh, <laughs> what? Isn't that interesting how, you know, anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Jenny Heenstra. Something very small, it's all about mentality. So, stop thinking of all the reasons why you can't succeed and start thinking of all the reasons you should or you can. Mm -hmm. um, I know I used to always be like, oh, well, I'm not smart enough. Oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, but I didn't, I didn't win this or, oh, but uh, I don't, I, I, you know, and you start snowballing this negative mindset, it's, then you're never going to take action. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I would kind of add on to that, go for what you want, not what you think you can get. Yeah. Because we tend to limit our, uh, ideas um, because, oh, well, but I'm only, you know, I'm only so-and-so, I'm only from this level, I'm not, um, or I'm not really wealthy, I don't have just, you know, tons of money at my finger disposal, or um, I, I, you know, whatever it is, we kind of put limitations on our, our thought process when, yeah. no, you know, absolutely think of the biggest, hairiest, audacious, scariest goal out there and do it. And yeah. I'm guaranteed if you want to, you put your thought and energy, it, things will re be revealed. Yeah. But I, as artists, and I'm sure you've had this experience, like you don't want to start until everything is in order. Like, okay, um, I want to do an album, but I want to make sure I know 
what the theme is, what my colors are, what's my graphic, what's the title of the album, what exactly is my message, what are the songs, and I can't start until I have everything in order. Well, you know, you can, you can mull that over all you want. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer, really. You just kind of have to go, and it will eventually, you know, take yeah. shape. You know, my but impression of you, my impression of the, the crazy Jenny Heemstra is that you do now and think later, perhaps. Could I be right on that? Uh, do a little bit I, now I and then think as you go. No, I really take that as a compliment. Uh, but no, I mean, not that's not to say I don't put hours and hours, for example, even this very interview, yeah. I, my husband is like, stop it, stop it. You know, I, re <laughs> I rehearsed what I was going to say. I probably did five hours of this and I wrote it down, yeah. said it to my cats. We had a conversation. So um, something as, as this, you know, as simple as this, I put hours into this. Okay, well, um, well so, Arts and Farts appreciates it. <laughs> I think you build that momentum once you get to a certain place in life where you just can kind of ride on that, ride that energy because you've already, you've done everything, you're ready and you're prepared, you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So you can face the challenges as they come. Yeah. Um, and so you don't have to sit and, you know, but yeah, there is a bit of a reality, as you just said, though, you know, sometimes you just have to act and make a decision and think later, because if you don't, you've missed the opportunity. Someone yeah, else has yeah. stepped in. Well, that's probably a sign you've done amazing because, you know, it just seems like you've acted and done so much, uh, just like from reading your bio and seeing the, all, all the stuff on your, your website, that is the impression someone would have that it's just kind of effortless for you. So I think that's, that's really, really amazing. Wow. Okay. Um, well I have to say that, Mark, if you come and perform with me in India, you will know what I'm talking about. Because if you can perform in India to like 7,000 people who really don't have this history and culture of Western classical music and to get their attention and to bring them in and to, mm -hmm. because they will straight up get up, oh, my phone, okay. You know, they don't care. Yeah. Uh, that said, there's not everybody is, you know, they're a great audience. But when you do that for three and a half years, like I did when I lived there, um, mm -hmm. you know, you build a muscle and you kind of know how to <laughs> handle that. So yeah, yeah. anyway, I'm, I'm saying let's continue this and I hope to see you sometime in India. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, let's hope that maybe that'll be the next arts and farts program is uh, a reunion concert with uh, Jenny Heemstra in Kolkata. That would be awesome. There we um, go. I, I'd like to kind of uh, just to end the program, I'd, I'd like to open up the mic to you just to talk about, uh, life now in uh, Dushanbe, Tajikistan. Uh, I was going to ask you some questions about it, but I know sure. very little about life there. Um, you know, you can you can read about it and read all sorts of you know historical things and see some amazing <laughs> photos. Uh, so I'd I'd like to just open up the mic and you can just talk about uh, life there, what it is to be like a musician there, um, especially classical musician. So three, two, one, sip of coffee. I know. Cheers. Oh. I wish I had my machine because it's 7.30 now here. Yeah, um, no, coffee, coffee's um, getting low, so. <laughs> um, this part of the world used to be um, part of the Soviet Union, right? Russia. Um, mm. It was, well, I actually have some notes, but I don't think I want to talk about Okay, so it was, this area was a village, a big village, and this city was a market. And the market was called Dushan Bay because the market was on Monday, and Monday translates to Dushan Bay. Really? So, um, as you know, the Roman Empire expanded into Central Asia and they took this area with it. And then with the um, Soviet Empire in 1924, they came and, and made Dushanbe the capital of Tajikistan. Mm. And then at one point it was also called, um, well, I think it was Stalingrad as well for about 50 years. Um, so here we see great influence of the Soviet area era. They came in and built huge buildings, Soviet style, which is basically a huge cement block, large, um, the, the, what is it? The hammer and sickle is still mm -hmm. visible on a lot of buildings, but they loved music and culture. So they built the Aini Opera and Ballet Theater, which I've had the privilege of performing in. They have a conservatory. They have other uh, state institutions here. And they, you know, they built the infrastructure really of the roads and everything. And um, how should I say, um, with the fall of the Iron Curtain, then um, you know, Tajikistan became its own independent nation. Mm. Now, Tajikistan, as I said, they they love um, Western classical or cla music. So you know, you have your Shostakovich, Rachmaninoff, Tchaikovsky. 
They love ballet. They love the arts. They have a great appreciation for the higher arts, but they also have um, their traditional cultural music, which stems much more from the, um, it's called Shashmakom, and it's coming from the Iranian and, oh, what am I looking for? The, not Farsi. Oh, oh anyway, you can Google it. But their instruments are gorgeous. Uh, they're two stringed lutes with a long neck. Um, usually two men are playing one, or two men are each playing one, and then they sing probably lyrics in Persian, some love mm -hmm. lyrics. Um, you also, of course, they use the violin. Um, yeah, they oh, have wow. yeah. the dutara, the tanbur, which is their hammer dulcimer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they also have the proper symphony orchestras here. They have okay. the president's symphony orchestra, which I've also had the pr uh, privilege of performing with and touring with here. And then they have the uh, two other orchestras at the opera and ballet kind of in residency. Okay. Um, so it's wonderful. It's very rich culture. We're surrounded by mountains. Uh, the Pamir mountains are near us. Um, I mean, I love that as somebody from the Midwest, I'm not used to seeing mountains just when I look out the window, that's great. Um, and, but unfortunately, you know, I don't speak Tajik and Russian and really there is, you know, there's a push for the revival of Tajik language, Tajik music. Um, and currently the president is actually um, destroying a lot of the Soviet era buildings and really trying to make this Tajikistan and Tajikistan mm -hmm. only and to mm -hmm. kind of eliminate the, the Soviet um, ruins or in Soviet buildings that remain and just mm -hmm. claim this as their own identity. So it's very interesting, uh, but you definitely feel, you know, I have never visited any other country like um, Dushan, like Tajikistan. And how long have you been there? I have been here two years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and so um, I really, it was it was great. You know, I, I I met the director and as part and the admin director and the, the conductor of both of the orchestras here, and they were totally on board to again with with a translator, several translators, uh, to move forward and collaborate and bring in international artists yeah. and um you know i had i was in india performing in early march and i came back and then all of a sudden you know covid happened and mm. so here the airport is closed um no, okay. I have, and so we can't bring in any artists and clearly it makes it challenging to kind of program a season when this epidemic is happening and you know we physically can't get people in and out of here but yeah. um i was really looking forward to this this next year of just um, wonderful collaborations. We had set up that we would bring in almost an artist almost every other month and they could wow. perform at this beautiful opera hall. I mean, it's, I think it's kind of on par with severance, you know, it might be a little stretch, but it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. And you know, uh, here I am, but oh, I'm, par with, I'm par with severance hall in Cleveland. Yeah. It's, it's grand. I mean, it's a former Soviet, it just has its own style beautiful chandeliers, gorgeous chandeliers and woodwork. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, not acoustically, <laughs> but, mm. um, you know, it, it just, it's very impressive considering, I think Dushanbe has 800,000 people, you know, yeah. I mean, this is small. Unfortunately, this is one of the smallest and poorest countries in the world. Mm. Um, so, and, mm -hmm. um, but there's, there are, there are great tourist att attractions. They just, um, build a gorgeous mosque, which is on par with the um, Blue Mosque in Turkey. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's just really a lot of gorgeous hiking. You can go in the mountains. Um, and um, it's, but it's just, you know, unfortunately we're kind of stuck right now. Um, yeah, yeah. No, no one's, well, no, no one's really going anywhere yeah. now or really wants to go anywhere now. And this is still kind of new that we're kind of on lockdown still. So, uh, but it I know, like I know. it's it's like COVID. COVID is we're over COVID, but COVID is not over us. You know? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, it's great for you know, it's amazing people with vision like yourself. Uh, that hasn't slowed down. I think I imagine you're always thinking of what is the next thing to do, planning ahead, and now is a good time to do that. So I'm really interested and very excited to see uh, all the things you do in the future. And I think um, uh, I think. A lot of musicians, especially now that have time to really kind of uh, 
think about what, what they want to do, what they're going to do, uh, they should definitely um, follow what you're doing because I think you can really learn a lot uh, just about you know how to really how to plan ahead and just kind of get things uh, get things going in all sorts of different ways. So um, I, I I think I, maybe I've done a service by bringing you on arts and farts. To if I could yes, take I a little credit, reach, <laughs> no, out, reach out. You know, I can always. I'm all. I mean, that's one thing. I'm always interested to learn, and I'm always interested to um, help. And if I can't help someone, at least um, help facilitate, you know, I've always said this to so many people and I wish they would take advantage. I'm in this, you know, I have interesting connections around the world as not that, you know, I, I'm just saying, you know, I, I've lived in weird places and I love it when people say, oh, well, do you know um, a place I could perform? Can you hook me up with this? Help me here. Absolutely. Like mm -hmm. no problem. I love that. I love it. And to go along with that question that you said, what is kind of the next step? Always think about what you can give back, what you can do to contribute to someone, you know, as yeah. versus, oh, I need this. Oh, I need to, I want to do this. You know, you'd be surprised how if you start and shift your mind of, well, what can I help with? How can I use my skill set and what I do, what I do best? And how mm -hmm. can I give back and contribute to whatever this person is doing or this organization? And you'd be surprised, you know, that just that kind of shift in mentality and approach really goes far. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's like karma or something, but anyway, um, yeah. sorry, I, I went out of tangent, but yes, no, please, no, no. thank you so much for having me. Uh, this was great, and I'm not joking, it, you know, if you ever you want to do a CD release party or something and go, go to India with me or come here when it's possible, you know, I'm happy to help you do that too. Yeah, well, that, it, it definitely seems like, you know, something I'd, I'd, I'd love to do, and the, the way you've uh, described it to our viewers, um, uh, kind of what you're doing, I think a lot more people will be interested. And I think a lot, as I said before, a lot of people watch uh, the program after it's live. I think especially probably a lot of people are going to watch it in the afternoon. Uh, so I hope they they really kind of follow what you're doing. And I'm definitely going to uh, keep in touch. And hopefully we could have a, a reunion concert. And, um, and I just really like to thank you for sharing so much about what you do. I think it's been uh, great the time we spent talking. I, as I said yesterday, I was like, oh, let's try to keep it in 40 minutes. It's like, we've gone over an hour and I think we can still talk about more. Have we know? really? Oh yeah. No, no, it's, it's great. I, I think there's still so much to talk about. That's why I just kept the show rolling because, uh, you know, especially with wrap learning. Up, wrap up. Yeah, no, 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 no wrap up, no wrap up. It's been, it's been too great. And, you know, it's also been great seeing you again after all these all these years. So I hope you keep in touch and uh, I'm going to start practicing the Chasso poem again. I know. I, I, I tried to find that music. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you for, um, you know, giving me this platform. And I really, really wish you the best with your career, with all the things you're doing. I saw you your so recent much. CD release, all these awesome tours and really kind of interesting instrumentation, um, you know, bands and groups that, that you've been, you know, working with, not just piano and violin. Or oh, piano yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, Although protection. that's still a tried and true classic, so. <laughs> great. But, you know, it's just great. And, and now, you know, to see you as a, a dad and everything, I just wish you yeah. all the best. And uh, thank you once again. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. And thank you to all our viewers for uh, watching this interview. Uh, Where in the World is Your Music Studio on the Arts and Farts channel. You've been, uh, watching Jennifer Heemstra or Jenny Heemstra that I can now say, but if you want to search for her on, uh, on Google, put Jennifer Heemstra piano and uh, you will not be disappointed. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show and uh, have a wonderful evening. I see it's dark in the background there. So the sun has definitely gone down. So <laughs> you can't show us any more outside views. So that's a good way to wrap it up. Absolutely. All right, All right. so good night. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.